All right, so I just did a four hour live stream on this topic right here. Can I be rebuild YouTube with WordPress? The answer is, I mean, kind of, sort of, if you know what you're doing, if you got good tools, you can do like a lot of the features. Obviously, I did not actually rebuild YouTube. This platform is, you know, years, years old, and I, you know, I, I didn't just build it in four hours. However, um, I did cross off a lot of these things, talk through a lot of stuff. If you're interested in that live stream, I'm actually going to go back. I literally got off this a couple hours ago. I'm going to go back and put in some timestamps. I will leave a card to this live stream up in the top of this video or whatever. And then also in the description, if you want to check some of that out, skip around, what have you. But I'm making this video because towards the end of that live stream, there's one thing in particular that I actually think would be really useful depending on what you're doing, whether it's like a video platform or just anything where you have users and you're serving them like date, like you're, you're, you have content you want to serve to the users and you want to give them a little bit more of a personalized uh, environment uh, on your website. So there's a million different use cases for this. I'm gonna give you just the high level and hopefully you can take it and run with it. I'm gonna use the YouTube as an example. So when you go to YouTube, if you go to your home screen on YouTube, if you're logged in, YouTube does a really good job because they're a big company, big tech company, and they do like algorithms very well. Well, you don't have to get really like technical coding wise if you have decent tools to do something similar. What I'm gonna show you here is with WordPress, uh, Bricks Builder and Crocoblock Jet Engine to just kind of do a very simple way of getting a home page to kind of be a little bit more customized. Um, it's kind of manual in a sense from the user standpoint, but you can get like a like this this one that I have highlighted here right on the screen, like a home page with a simple algorithm, manually uh, create a customized feed and randomized feed. So I'm just gonna walk through everything, and like I said, I do this for about a half hour in this video around like the three hour mark here. Uh, but I, there's a couple pieces in here that I, I couldn't get until I got off stream and just kind of figured about myself on the, on the back end of it. So high level, this is like your homepage, obviously looks like shit. This was not a design tutorial. Okay. This was just like a functionality tutorial. But again, this is more or less a homepage where you have multiple videos. I have two accounts, two user accounts. They're going to see a red screen, like a red browser up here. That's, that's user number one. And then you can, we can flip over to user number two which is this blue on the on the browser, okay? As you can see already, these are both on the home page and their their query, so to speak, that what they're seeing of uh, what videos they're seeing is different. That's literally the entire point and certainly there's different ways to kind of go about that, but I tried to put together this a uh, little bit more of a customized way. So I'm going to try to walk you through everything uh, and let's just kind of see how it goes. So the first thing you need to do is, uh, and this will work with other builders too, but I'm using, like I said, I'm using Bricks and, and Jet Engine is helping quite heavily with their uh, their querying. So if you go to like your homepage, right? A couple things going on here. We can look over the stru structure panel. Don't worry about the first section. That's just the heading. Second section here, this video section, is it's just a it's just a a standard uh, card thing. If you want to see how I built these cards and everything like that, just go into the um, go into that that live stream and, t and take a look. But you can see that this section right here is just a video grid, a video card, media wrapper, all this other stuff. Don't don't you don't even need to worry about any of that. That's the card. The only thing we're really concerned about in this video is querying. So we go to the card level, and then we kind of talk about we get rid of this conditions thing here. Let's close out of that, and we look at our query. And our query actually for something like this, I couldn't even use the bricks query builder. I had to use the jet engine query builder because it's extremely powerful. So let's think about this. Take one step back. At your bare minimum viable product, if you were going to create like a YouTube thing, right, and you had multiple people logging in, or you had a public person logging into the homepage of your YouTube, your clone tube, then what would they see? They would probably see all of the videos that you have, right? It would see all of them, just because like, why not, right? They would just see a whole gallery or a whole grid of all of them. Well, it's effectively what we have at the bottom, and I'll show you that one real quick because it's easier. If you come down to this video card here, and you're familiar with how bricks uh, looping works, you, you query or you loop like just one individual card and it does the rest. So you come over to here, query, and you can say posts, and then you can say videos. So again, videos is our CPT. Again, go watch the other video. But this is just querying all the videos. That's what it's doing right here. That's all, just querying all the videos. And realistically, if it's a home page on YouTube or something like that, then you could say maybe like random order, right? Because like it's, it's not like in, uh, um, 
if it was your subscriptions, then maybe it would be in chronological order, like newest at the beginning, but what have you. So you could you could change that up, sorting, order by, not, not a big deal. But this section down here is kind of like our, we'll call it our public facing, uh, like like an un, an un, un, unlogged in person, somebody that's not, not signed in. We don't know any information about them. I'll get to all that, but we don't know any information about them. So this is your minimum viable product, something like this. Okay, perfect. I'll touch on this real quick is when we get deeper, right? When we get deeper, we're going to have to set some conditions to show this or not show this based off of the information that we're going to get from our from our signed in people. But again, at the bare minimum, this is the minimum viable product. Okay, cool. So it all makes sense why I have two sections here. There might be a little bit more elegant way to do it, but we're going to talk about conditioning and dynamic visibility here in a second once we once we talk about this. But right here, let's what I did was I literally like copied that section, right? So we have two sections that are effectively the same. Obviously, we talk about some things to make make it as maintainable as possible. But let's talk about the top now. That's your minimum viable product at the bottom. Let's talk about the top. So what you want now is you want to create a homepage that is more customized and more personalized, really, to the people that are logging in. We've got these two users. Let's see what we can do about that. So here's how I went about this. And again, you could write your own algorithm. You could do some crazy shit. But the, the easiest way that I thought to do it at a high level was just ask the users when they sign up or like put it in their profile or something, hey, what are you interested in? That's a, that's a pretty simple way, right? That seems like relatively straightforward. Okay, so if we go back over to our dashboard, <clears throat> I'm just gonna walk you through the steps that I did here because some of the stuff is already completed, but a lot of it is relatively straightforward. The only difficult part is that took me a long time. The part that I was struggling on was the querying. So we have videos, okay? I'll just, I'll walk you through the pieces of it. We have videos which are just, again, if you watch the live stream, I talk about how I created all these different custom post types, just threw some data in here, video URL, video file, like whatever you wanna do, right? Like your your featured image, all that sort of stuff, right? And it's just a custom post type through uh, Jet Engine. I'll open up the custom post type here, just so you can kind of see it. So this is videos, it's video, video, um, talked about all this, where we have like the featured image, all, all that sort of stuff, just showing you the meta fields, okay? straightforward. This is this is relatively straightforward. If you don't know about this, go watch that live stream. Go watch my dynamic data series as well. I talk about ACF. I talk about uh, jet engine like this. I'll leave a link. Okay. But that that's straightforward part. So you create the post type, then you create a taxonomy. And in this case, it's just video categories. Again, very straightforward. There's nothing crazy going on here. We didn't even add any meta fields to any of this or anything like that. So we have a taxonomy for our videos. Then we went and we actually created categories. So we had the video categories taxonomy, then we created some video categories. So again, YouTube, there's a ton of videos on there. There's a ton of people that are uploading different types of things, right? So cars, news, sports, WordPress. Those are some of the, there's some dummy categories I made. Okay, perfect. Well, now that we have a, some videos, we have some categories, we have to attach and assign those categories to videos. Okay, perfect. So let's go back over to the videos and let's take a look at this one. I have this random hockey video. If you look over here on the right-hand side, obviously that belongs in the sports category. Perfect. I have a couple other ones where um, we've got this like bridge builders one in here. That's a WordPress thing. We put the WordPress uh, category on it. And then we have this cool car video and we have cars. So there's a couple other ones, like one or two other ones that have those similar things. But again, straightforward videos, video categories, and assign categories to the videos. Okay, now what we've created is a little bit of a like a content management, literally content management system and structure there. So all of our data is starting to get kind of you know, categorized in that sense. Perfect. <clears throat> All right. So the next thing we do is we have to figure out how we're going to say, okay, that's, that's awesome. You're saying that's awesome, Mark. We have videos that are categorized. I know how to do that, but how do you actually show them to different people? Well, with jet engine, the way that I figured out how to do that, or whether I, I didn't really figure it out, I'm sure, but I, the way that I, the way that I went is there's a, not, there's a concept called meta boxes. If you're at all familiar with ACF, then you know that this is actually more how ACF works because a meta box is just think of it as like a list of fields that you can attach to multiple different like post types or really object types or whatever in WordPress. It's a little different than how Jet Engine handles the post types and you just add the meta fields directly to the post types. It's neither here nor there. But the but what we're doing here is we want to connect interests. Like we want to get, like we were saying, we want to get the user's interests. Okay, well, what does that mean? I need to create 
away, like a, like a field or two or something or whatever. I need to get information attached to my specific users. How am I going to do that? You might go into post types. You might look at the built-in post types and try to do it. I'm going to tell you the answer. Just go to meta boxes, okay? Create a new meta, meta box, name it extra user fields or something like this, and make sure that the meta box is for user. There you go. That's It's that simple. And then you go through here and you can say user, uh, user profile or uh, pick whatever one you want here. This is not super important, like the visibility controls. The only thing we're doing here is we're adding a meta field into our meta box that we have attached to the user. It's not really a post type, I guess, right? But the user object, we'll call it, okay? So if we have, in, so what we've done here in the bottom here is we just said interests, interests, and then I made it a checkbox, okay? And then I made it, the source of the actual checkboxes, which I will show you what this looks like in a minute, is from a query builder. Now, I'm got to stop. We got to stop here because why did I do that? Well, here's why I did that. I like maintainability, scalability, and dynamic data as much as I humanly possibly can in every single website. So you're looking at these options and you're thinking, okay, manual input and bulk manual input. Those kind of mean the same thing, but ultimately it means that I'm gonna I'm gonna write four things in here or whatever, five things in here. And the only way that they're going to change is if I come back in and manually change them. Not what we want. Then you look at glossary and you're like, that's close as well. But if you know what a glossary is, it's actually kind of like a you can you can change it in multi you can change it in one place. There's one source of truth. You go into Jet Engine, you create a glossary. It's a really cool feature, but not in this case because you write that in one place and then you can use it in multiple places. In our specific case, we are trying to the options that we want in the interests box that I will show you in a second don't get don't get ahead of yourself is the options there are the exact same we want them to we want them to constantly mirror we want the 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 categories on you on our YouTube to constantly mirror the categories and the interests that the people can pick from so the best way to do that is to use a, qu a query builder in this case and and go actually create a quick little query and then utilize that. I've created all video categories, which is a very simple query. We'll go look at it real quick. You come over to query builders or your query, your query builder, and you go to all video categories. Obviously you would create a query, all video categories. It's a terms query. Okay. And you would just say taxonomy video categories. That's it. All that's going to do is query and bring back all of the categories that you have. Just to make this a little more simple for you, I will actually demo adding a category so you fully understand what this is like, okay? But let's go back to the meta boxes for just a second. The A couple little things that might trip you up here and just, if you don't understand, just, ex, just I'll explain them to you. When the uh, value field and the label field, you can pretty much do almost whatever you want in Jet Engine, but sometimes it defaults to things that are incorrect. So in this case, it's going to say ID here, but this is thinking you're going to bring in posts, which in this case we're not. So you need to change that to term ID, and down here you need to change it to name. Okay, and then this is just however you want to kind of like show it. And then definitely check check this box that says save as array. That was a problem that I uh, ran into and did not know how to solve. So. Let me explain to you what that is because I know there's probably a lot of a lot of things bouncing around your head now. Okay. So let's go over to our users. And I'll and I'll backtrack by explaining all this. Okay. We have two users on here, my name and then just John Doe. Okay. So if we come in to my user and we scroll all the way to the bottom, we see right down here is the only thing we're concerned about on this whole page, and it is extra user fields. That is the meta box that we created. That's the name we gave it. And this is the meta field that is in there called interests. You can see cars, news, sports, and WordPress. Those look really familiar. Where did those come from? They came directly from video categories. Okay. And I'm going to show you exactly what I just explained, why this is really important. If you change this to like books, or if you add books, I'm sorry, as a video category, you're going to do this. You're going to come back over to your, your, users interests area that they can that they can edit which again we could talk about in a different video how to do this on the front end with like ws form or something but let's just talk about the back end okay when i reload this page now what do you see at the bottom we have books cars news sports wordpress if you would have selected manual input or glossary and not query builder and not done that extra step of creating that query and and generating those dynamically that would not have happened and it would be a pain in the ass for you because you'd have to manage these things all in these different places you don't ever want to do that if you can avoid it so that is exactly what i meant when i said 
the uh, query builder situation. Okay, hopefully you understand that. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer. Anyway, <clears throat> if we move on here. Now what we have though is we have these interests, this interest field being generated dynamically in, in mirroring our video categories. Okay, great. So, well, the next step would be, again, if we had a front end form when they register or in their profile or something, maybe we'd have a section that says, hey, what are you interested in? And they could just check all the boxes that they're interested in. Well, we don't have that. So in lieu of that, we're just going to do it on the back end of WordPress because it's the exact same thing, just a little less pretty. Uh, in my case here, I am only interested in WordPress. That's what I have checked. Okay, great. Now at this point, I have it already done, but if this, if you're this far and you're moving through this, you're not gonna know what to do next, or I'm sorry, you're not gonna see anything on the front end because we haven't, what we have to do now is we have all of the data in the back end ready to go. We literally are done here at this point. If you separate the project, you know, projects like this into back end and front end, like um, organizing data and displaying data, you are literally done organizing the data. You know, all the video categories, the videos are categorized, assuming like you did all this, right? The videos are categorized. They have, uh, you have a list of categories. Every video has a category or whatever. You have your, uh, each one of your users has the option to add their interest, assuming you've done it for them or they've done it or whatever. They already have, um, th that data is already created as well. So like they're interested in category, whatever. You have that category because everything's synced and mirrored and everything like that. So you're good. Like you all, like the, the CMS portion of this is done, okay? So what do we do on the front end to make this actually work and, and make everybody be happy? Well, we have to go back over to our um, front end here, which I have way too many things open at this point, so I do apologize. And we come into our video card again, okay? So we come all the way back here. Now again, I'll talk about the conditions here in a second once we actually understand what's going on. But at the top here, we have our video card. And what can you see here so far? Well, I have a query, and this is a jet engine query. This is not a uh, this is not a bricks query loop. This is a jet engine query builder. So you have to select jet engine query builder, and we're going to create another query. The query is going to be called videos based on current user. So think about that video based videos based on current user's interest. Okay. So if we head over to our query again, if we get out of here, we get out of here, and here we go. So get out of this. Just get out of that. Get out of that. Sorry, a lot of tabs open. Bear with me. Query Builder, this is where you wanna be, okay? Don't worry about the two on the bottom. That was in that live stream, you go check it out. Videos based on current user interests. This is what we want. This query is the key to the whole thing because what it's going to do, I'm gonna tell you at a high level and I'll explain it. What this query does is it says, all right, I'm gonna look at all the videos. Like on this home page. Think of it literally in steps. This is the best way that I've thought about how to think about querying and understanding like the display of data, okay? On this page would be every video. Like we're querying all of the videos, right? We're querying all the published videos. But that's not what we want. We wanna like filter it dynamically before the page even loads. And what do we wanna show? Well, we only wanna show videos that are public and live or whatever, and that the, that there, the category of those videos matches the interests of the current user. Now, you look at that and you think in pseudo you know, code language or whatever, pseudo querying, that's really not that hard of a thing. And it's really not. You just have to understand the buttons to click, basically, if you're using Jet Engine, okay? So videos based on current user interests, post query, videos, publish, publish, whatever. Uh, down here, you're going to a tax query because... We are querying videos of certain taxonomies. That's, that's what's happening here. And the taxonomy that we are looking at specifically is video categories. So we select video categories from this dropdown. We say term ID here. And again, sometimes you might have to play with these types of things. I've played with it for an hour and a half here trying to mess around with this. So I, this works now. But again, use this as an example if you're, if you're doing different things. But term ID, okay. And then you want jet engine meta field. The reason you want Jet Engine Meta Field is because we are trying to grab from that meta field of the meta box that we put in there. So this will be shown in here. It'll be extra user fields, user fields, and then interests. And then you will want to return field value. You could, you might be able to do field name and key and ID depending on how you do all this. But if you do term ID and field value, you should be good. The other important thing, you have to click over here on this advanced settings. 
And the reason you have to do this, we don't need this uh, about thing in here real quick. Let me get rid of this or you don't need this fallback here. I was playing around with something else. Um, the reason we have to go to advanced settings, we have to give the context of queried user. You're gonna drop down from this and you're gonna think, well, maybe it's current user, maybe it's current. I mean, I was like so confused on this. It's queried user because it's queried user, the way that the language is, is a little confusing in my opinion, but that is part of the queried user context is the person that is logged in. And that is exactly what we want. So think of that as potentially being one of the, one of the, one of the things that queried user could mean is the person that's logged in, okay? So what that took care of is show me video categories, show me videos in video categories, you know, with this term ID and all this other stuff that are comparing to, we're comparing to the interests, right? And it's gotta be what we talked about earlier, an array, because it could be like cars, WordPress, and sports or whatever. So interests, field value, and then of the queried user, which is the current logged in user, okay? All right, so then if we move down here, then our operator is in, not in, and exists or not exists. You just want in because if it's not in there, then you don't want it. It's pretty simple. Like it, it has to be video categories that are in the interests. It's actually relatively straightforward in that regard. Okay, and you can actually see over here too, this is, there's a button up here that says preview results. And then it gives you this nice side panel over here for, for uh, Crocoblock. You can kind of see most of the time what you're doing, and what would be queried even before you go out on the front end. So it's kind of nice in that way. Okay, awesome. So there's your query. There's your special query. And that query is gonna work obviously for every user because all that stuff is kind of dynamic in the sense, right? We're, we're dynamically getting the current user's interest so we can dynamically show them videos in the, the current uh, or in the, the associated video categories. All right. Hopefully all that made sense. So what that ultimately affords you is when you go back out on the front end and you have that jet engine query enabled right there, we could take a look at all this. Let's get rid of some of this stuff, okay? We talked about how each video, right, obviously has its own category. We talked about everything there. Let me go and let me just show you the exact demo here. This is user one, okay? This is this user right here. Oops, let me uh, just slide this over here. User one right here has just WordPress as their, their interest. They have signal tests that they just have WordPress. These two videos are categorized as WordPress. If we go back and let's say this is me and I'm like, ah, you know what? I don't really care about WordPress anymore. Uh, I just care about cars, okay? And then you come back in here. Well, I don't give a shit about WordPress anymore and they know and now they're just so, show me car stuff, okay? So there you go. And just to prove to you that this isn't that this doesn't just work like that, I will flip over to another one. Okay, and there's one more thing we have to talk about too, because there's an, there's a little bit of a of a of an issue that you will foresee if you're if you're if you're critically thinking. This is a different account now. Okay, we'll come back over here and we'll say John Doe. He doesn't care about WordPress or cars. He cares about sports and only sports. <clears throat> and then now we have just the hockey video. Okay. I don't know why it says access denied. That has nothing to do with what we're doing. It's just a uh, user switching thing. I'll show you one more thing and then I'll show you the very last thing. Now, um, John Doe had a, actually, there's there's none in books, so let's get rid of books. Let's go to cars. Now, John Doe here, he's really interested in cars and sports, right? So then come back over here and we have cars and sports. Now, again, there's not a lot of data in here to show you this exact example, but again, use your imagination of how you can you know, handle all this and utilize all this, right? So, that's all well and good. That actually might get you most of the way there. You might be right. You might be fine with that. If your website does not take public visitors, you're actually perfect because there's never probably a chance that you would. I mean, the only the only question here becomes, regardless actually if it's public or not, you're saying to yourself, okay, well, Mark, if I don't force them to add interests, then what happens if there's no interests uh, populated? What if like I go back over here and what if I go back over here and I and I say no cars, no sports, I'm not interested in anything, show me new things, like which was what YouTube does, right? Like, I mean, you could go YouTube without being logged in, you could go to YouTube without like ever using it, it's gonna show you information, right? Well, this is what will happen, but this is not what happens by default with our current setup. What happens by default is you don't see anything. And then if you don't see anything, there is a there is an option here, which I will go back over to our, our dev spot. By default, okay, 
with this query set up here, what's gonna happen is that you have an option here for no results. You can put a template in there, it's a little finicky, you can try to play around with that if you'd like. You'd say like, oh hey, there's no results, or go fill out your interest and tell them to go do it, or you can put t no, you put text in here and it'll say like, you know, no results or something. You could do that, okay? I thought there would be a more elegant way to just be like, hey, in, in our query, if you don't if you don't get any results, then um, just show all the posts. I would love that because that would be like perfect and you would take care of everything at the query level and not the, not the page building level. But if I'll look into that, but if you find something, leave it in the comments. But here's a different example. It's a little, it's a little dirtier, but it's the same thing, okay? You have two sections. This is why I talked about this earlier. What you just saw when we did that example over on the other side, when I said like, this is how it works, but not how it works by default, is all I did was I created another video section, okay? It's a, just a basically a duplicate. And then down here for our cards, for our card down here, we are just querying all the posts, videos that are random, like all the videos and put them in a random order, or again, it doesn't matter the order by. And then what we did and why you don't see the other one, why you don't see the one that's like, because really you're rendering two things. So how do you see one when you want to see, how do you see only the top one when you have interests and how do you see only the bottom one when you don't have interests or if you're public or whatever? Well, simple conditions, that's all it is. So if you click on the bottom section, right? And we come up to conditions in Bricks, we, ch we go to dynamic data and we say our extra fields users, which is just if you scroll to the bottom or find your interests one, all you're doing is that's your field, okay? So jet engine interest, which is the same one we've been dealing with, right? And if it if jet engine interests, if interests, right, equals nothing, like if there's no inch, that's what that means. It's a little confusing when you read this, but if interests equal nothing, show all the videos. That is how you have to think about that, okay? So that you show the section with all the videos. And then if we go back to the top, if we say interest does not equal nothing, so there is something in our interests, then we're gonna show the, the grid that is populated via the interests stuff. So uh, yeah, that's it. And then it works and it's pretty cool. I'm really excited about it because I thought about this idea for a long time and uh, it's pretty dope. So yeah, that's how you kind of do like a really simple, I don't even really wanna call it an algorithm, but there's a little bit of an algorithm-ish to it, right? Because you're able to kind of uh, personalize the, whatever it is, a home page or a specific page like that. I think it's a really cool technique depending on what you wanna do. Again, take this and run with it. Do not just like, you don't need to just recreate this. There's like a million and one examples of, of things that you could do cool with this. Doesn't have to be videos, it could be whatever you want. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. I would uh, do my best to answer them. Uh, yeah, and go check out, like I said, go check out that live stream, the Dynamic Data Course. I'll leave links and everything like that. I'll also leave links to Crock a Block down in the description if you wanna check that out because uh, it saved my butt a ton of times and made me uh, just make awesome websites with uh, very f little coding involved because a lot of it is just encapsulated via the uh, GUI there. So thank you guys, really appreciate it. Uh, I'll talk to you in the next one.